And Planet Tracker in DaVinci Resolve is such a powerful tool because you can create so many cool effects with it, such as tracking text on an object or place something onto a wall or even create a locked on stabilization effect. But you will only have the full creative freedom if you really know how to use the motion types. And when I was starting out with the Planet Tracker, I didn't know at all what to do. I always had to pull up a tutorial to really understand what I'm doing here. And after this tutorial, you will fully understand the Planet Tracker and know exactly which type you should use in which scenario. Without wasting any more time, let's start with the tutorial. Let's get a clip into our timeline and open it directly in the Fusion page. There we want to select Media In, hit Shift plus Spacebar to open our tool menu, search for the Planar Tracker and apply it. Important to know, the Planar Tracker tracks surfaces. That means we always have to define an area that needs to be tracked by clicking and drawing points. Even if we only want to track a point, we still need to track around that point. But let's start by understanding what's going on here in the Inspector. First is the Operation Mode. There we have some options for what we can do with our tracking, but before we can do anything, we need to track first. That's why by default it's set to track and we'll leave it there in the beginning. Now it starts to get interesting. First of all, what's the difference between a point tracker and a hybrid point area? Point tracking follows small, clear details like corners and works best on sharp images. Hybrid point area also looks at textures, so it works better on blurry or soft surfaces. In short, hybrid point area takes longer to process, but it's better at tracking, so I always choose hybrid point area. And now it gets really important which motion type do you want to choose. Well, that always depends on your clip and what you're doing. But don't worry, today we'll solve this mystery. Let's break them down quickly and later we'll use them on some effects. In the end, they define how much information is being tracked from your scene. Translation is the easiest tracker. You want to choose it if you want to track up and down movement as well as left and right movement. So, the X and Y axis. I always remember it this way. The letter T in translation shows me the two directions of the movement that will be tracked. Any other movement like scaling or rotation will not be captured with this tracker. The second motion type still uses translation but will also recognize if your object is rotating and it captures this movement. The next one does the same but also includes scaling. That means it's already a pretty intelligent tracker and can understand if the camera moves forward or backward. Then we go to Affin which is nothing else than translation, rotation, scaling and shearing. And shearing is this kind of movement, it can capture that too. And perspective is basically every movement you can imagine. So no matter which angle or perspective you're looking from, it captures it. Now I want to dive into three examples with you and let's see if you're able to guess which motion type to use in the right scenario. So I have this rotating wheel here and I want to track it so it stays locked on the screen and the background is rotating instead. Which one of the motion types would you choose? We only want the rotation, but we don't need scaling, so we choose the one closest to the top that includes rotation. Let's select it. Before we start to track, we need to tell the program where to start tracking. And we do this by pressing the set button here, then we track forward and make sure to track backward as well, so the whole scene is tracked. Now that it's tracked, we can finally change our operation mode. And since we want to stabilize it, there are only two options we can choose here, either steady or stabilize. But what's the difference? Because when you apply them, they almost look identical. Well, steady is not really locking it in place. It's more forgiving and tries to keep it steady, but stabilize really locks it in place. So to lock it on, let's choose stabilize. Perfect, we are almost there. If we now add a transform node and zoom in, we've already achieved our desired outcome. Let's hop over to our next use case. Now I want to lock the stabilization onto the headphones here to center them. Which one of our motion types do we need to choose? We have to track the up and down movement as well as the left and right. Because I don't want to include the rotation or any other perspective, all I want is to place it in the center. So we only need the translation motion type in this case. Let's draw our shape around the object we want to center. Hit the set button to define our starting point and track in both directions. Now, if we hit stabilize again, our image is locked onto the headphones. So, enough of stabilization. Let's place something onto a wall. There we really need to understand the camera angle. So, which motion type would you choose here? 
we really want to understand the perspective here with our tracker, so we use perspective. And don't forget to set the reference time, then start tracking. Once we've tracked the whole scene, we can finally use our last operation mode here, which is called corner pin. Now, if we connect a video, text or photo to our node, we can position it on our screen. That's also, by the way, how you would approach a screen replacement. But there's only one thing, you can't really keep the original size and measurements of your shape, because you need to eyeball it. So let's change our operation mode back to tracking, and then, if we can find the button again, it's called Create Planar Transform. Now this new node appears, and we want to swap it out. We bring it into our node tree by searching for a merge node and connecting it. We put our media into the yellow input of the transform and the output into the merge. Instead of using the planar tracker, we use the planar transform, which is basically a normal transform node, but it has all the tracking data embedded. The cool thing now, your media keeps its original shape and moves accordingly. If you want to reposition it, just bring in another normal transform node and there you can scale and position it to your needs. Wow, you're still here. So if you fully understand now the Planet Tracker, write in the comments Creator Army to let me know that you have understand what I was talking about. And if you still have questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments, I try to answer them all. Take this new skill, get creative and let's start creating.